All right, greetings, uh, everyone. It's Crystal Denise. We are live tonight. It is the last Monday of the month. It's September 26th. And um, I'm excited about tonight. Um, I always am excited when I have a guest, but this guest is very, very special and dear to my heart. Um, he and his queen, Mama Yah. Um, but I want to start off by uh, just taking a moment to remember one of our grand ancestors today is the day that she entered the physical realm in 1936, Mama Winnie Mandela, who was one of our bravest, the mother of the country, uh, freedom fighters. And, and we need to remember our great mamas. I was speaking to some people yesterday about, um, I was here at the center, came in yesterday and I was just looking around the walls and some of the ancestors. And I was looking at Mama Ida B. Wells, Mama Francis Chris Wilson, Mama Fannie Lou Hamer, Mama Harriet Tubman, Mama Ella Baker, Tony Morrison, and on and on, because we honor our ancestors here. And I was just thinking about our great mamas, Mama Winnie, and thinking about how much they left us thinking about we really need to be learning of who they are and remembering and practicing what they left us we we spend so much time worrying about what's trending and worrying about the celebrities and and all these other things that have taken us off course but we really really need to study our great mamas and we need to take them black. Um, it's oftentimes when I'm reading about some of these great scholars and great elders and great mamas like Fanny Jackson Cop and, and Marva Collins, and you read and you study and you look at how white women are trying to capture the essence of who our ancestors were and are and take them as part of their quote movement because we don't value and take heed to what they teach us. So I was just having that thought when I was looking at some of the video and, and, and some of the speeches that Mama Winnie made during her time here in the physical realm and how we don't even embody that spirit anymore, but we're going to, we're going to work on that. Sister Mila and I, Sister Sade and I, we have talked and we're really going to take us back to the essence of who we are as African women. So I just want to remember Mama Winnie Mandela on her day, September 26th. Ashe, 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 y'all. So tonight I have with me one of my favorite teachers. Um, and if you don't know who he is, I encourage you to become familiar with him. Um, I was looking through some of my notes. I had taken a couple courses under him. It's a flying here, y'all. Um, I had taken a couple courses and I was looking and I was like, man, that was four years ago, 2018, when we did that center course. And I got so much out of it. I have pages and pages of notes. And then I also took to educate people. And I was telling Brother Patrick, I was like, we got to get Baba Baruti and Mama Yah to Senatobia, to Coldwater, to the Building Power Summit. And they came the following year, I think it was 2019. And so just following him on Facebook and having great conversations, they have been great jagnas for me, great role models. Um, I am so encouraged and inspired every time I talk with them. And whenever I ask, they always come through. And so I'm going to bring Baba Baruti on to the stream and I'm going to let him come in his way as far as introducing himself, what it is that they, he and Mama Yah do down in Atlanta and just welcome 
Welcome, Barbara Rudy. And I was so honored when you accepted my invitation to come on and talk with us a little bit today. Oh, it's it's honored. It's like I have a ton of things to say, but of course, after your introduction, my head is like at least this large <laughs> right now. It is it's always an honor. And honestly, when I I, I messaged you back and I said we were um, had just talked about the this this evening's um, and I call this an event. Um, we we talk about you regularly. Mm-hmm. You, you you're very much a part of this family. Any and I talk about you you regularly, and we. We have named you, you know, the frontline librarian. Yes. And that's whenever whenever we speak about you, um, you know, that's what we say. And I, I think about that uh, terminology and people need to know who you are. Yeah, they need to follow true. you and what you're saying online because I have yet to turn you on or accidentally stumble upon you saying something because I'm running through the, the timeline or what have you. And I, right. I stop because there's always something interesting that you're saying. You, you were just talking about sisters and Winnie is so... Nana Winnie Mandela, she is so very important and critical to us understanding who we are because the power that that woman exuded mm-hmm. and following that path, she never deviated right. from what she was about, what she was supposed to be about, what she was demonstrating to the people. And it, it causes me when 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 I think about you, and I, I'm, I, I would say when both of us think about you, um, you know, it's like the question, what is a librarian? Well, what is a librarian in terms of the front line? What is a librarian in terms of a center of the conscious community? And I have to think about that in uh, Chancellor Williams terms in the Chancellor Williams sense where, where he made the point. You, you, you don't just go and, and dig up the material and learn and write and have, you know, the, these, these major intellectual dialogues and all the rest of it. You, you apply it. You know, right. and you, the, what you tell people is supposed to be not just our story and what we need from our story, but how they need to apply it. And of course, that by example, you know, and we follow you, we follow the school. Uh, mm-hmm. Every time, you know, I make a purchase, and this isn't to toot my own horn, but every time I make a purchase, I'm looking at that smile, you know, and, it, and it's saying donation, you know, it goes, and that, that makes my day. Mm-hmm. So we, sometimes when I, order books, it'll put me on another platform within Amazon and I'll have to come out of there and go to the one that's right. you know, the smile. So, you know, we, we make sure that we uh, show love and, and support as much as we can. Um, and you're one of those 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 people, one of part of one of that organization that does good. And I'm not gonna spend all day on this, but the newsletter, I get mm-hmm. you know beautiful pictures. I keep up on it. It's it's like I'm there. There are always important topics. And even though there's you know, it's a serious discussion. It's also a family fun type discussion as mm-hmm. well. You get, see, you get to see the children, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that, of course, is the beautiful, you know, beautiful part. Um, but I'm, I'm again, I'm I'm honored to be here. Oh, Enia said to tell you she loved the the, the video, the, the YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, really, she really loved that. I'm, um, I'm trying to use all this technology, Bob, and I'm just like, okay. I don't know what I'm doing, so I just add music. I'm like, well, I'm I'm learning as I go. You know, mm-hmm. you know how it is when you're limited and mm-hmm. you have small numbers and you try mm-hmm. you're trying to do everything and, mm-hmm. and, and figure mm-hmm. out everything. So you know, I was like, oh, this is a great song to go with the book. You know, mm-hmm. the whole message and uh, on and on and the books mm-hmm. in there as well. Right. But uh, yeah, so. You know, I tell people, I was like, you know, Barbara Rudy and Mama Yada, they, they have named me the frontline librarian. Mm-hmm. And I feel honored because mm-hmm. I was just talking to some to a group yesterday and I said, you know, it takes courage to go in that library every day mm-hmm. and be unapologetic. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. is my goal now is to be unapologetic in every any space that I enter. Mm-hmm. And um, that means getting rid of the double consciousness. Mm-hmm. That means getting rid of the cold switching. Mm-hmm. I want to be Crystal Denise wherever I go. And mm-hmm. it was real interesting because I had the opportunity to teach an English class a couple of weeks ago on the use of library resources for their blues paper. Okay. And yes. I took advantage of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I read mm-hmm. from Fannie Lou Hamer's book and okay. my youngest daughter, the guy that she's dating, he was in the class. Oh, and okay. I saw, so I called Kara. I said, "Well, I'm sure Justin told you all about the class." And she said, "Yeah." He said, 
you know your mom came in there looking like the activist that she is. <laughs> <laughs> And so I was like, oh, I feel honored. So you know yes. what I represent as soon as I walk into the room, mm -hmm. and you know you're gonna get some kind of some type of message mm -hmm. when I um uh, whenever I had opportunity. Because one thing Brother Patrick told me is that we had to use every opportunity that goes along with what uh Nana John Henry Clark said, use mm -hmm. everything as a tool mm -hmm. for your liberation, and so use every opportunity to be effective mm -hmm. and to leave some type of message with whoever it is that you're talking with. Absolutely. So I just, I, I took that to heart and I still take it mm -hmm. to heart. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I really wanted to talk to you tonight because, you know, we have, uh, he's on tonight, Jahi, Jamni Akili. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see And him. he is one of our uh, youth warriors. Mm -hmm. And I met mm -hmm. uh, Jahi, I had done a escape room for Black History Month. Okay. Um, and the thing was the Underground Railroad. Okay. So he came to the escape room and he, he could tell the story too. He had been coming to the library and I had my Kwanzaa display up, mm -hmm. you know, and I did all these programs for Black History Month. And he came and we had a conversation and he was telling me how passionate he is okay. to do something. And I told him, you need to meet Brother Patrick. Mm -hmm. um, you need to meet the warrior. And mm -hmm. so... He did, and we've been connected ever since. That was like three years ago, going on four years. Mm -hmm. So when I asked you about um, the book, Message to the Warriors, it was him that I had in mind. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, yeah, because he is a true warrior. Um, he is with us every step of the way. And so he read the book probably in one or two days. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I just want you to talk about the writing of the books because in the video, you know, we have several here at the center and I have mm -hmm. several in my own collection. And I just want to want you to talk about, uh, you know, what inspires you to write because I'm trying to write and I know the task, the, the work involved and the mm -hmm. uh, procrastination for me mm -hmm. and just the whole mental um, strength that it it's takes to process. write. It's a process. It is. It is indeed a process, and if if I could put it in an, um, I say an honest nutshell, that's not what it it started as, uh, mm -hmm. in a real in a real sense. Of course, you know, you're in graduate school, you have to write. Undergrad, you know, you have to write. You yeah. you come out and you're 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 teaching. You have to write. Well, you don't have to, but for me, you know, I've I've been writing ever since I can remember. But, you know, letters to relatives who never responded and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> little points for me. I, that's how I got through the military. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for me being able to put my frustration down on paper, my anger down on paper, then that's one of the things I can say. I don't know if I would have survived. And that helped to hone uh, my work because you, you have to have a, a love for words. Whatever the language may be, we know this is a bastard language, but still it's, it's the language that we have at our disposal at this moment in this place. Yeah. Um, so you have to have, of course, that love for the language. And um, even though I start from the very beginning, if you want to be a writer, then you need to get a thesaurus. And mm -hmm. you, you need to get really familiar with that thesaurus um, and, and, and play with that language. And I mean, play with that language. Uh, but for for in terms of the, the books for our community, we, we had, I would say, come into serious consciousness, even though we were aware. I was crystal clear that that Europeans were the problem. I just did not understand the magnitude of it. I hadn't done the study. And he also was very clear. She was clearer than I was when mm -hmm. we met, you know, that the pro what the problem was. So uh, everything leading up to grad school to the time where the writing began was, was, a, was a time of discovery. And luckily, I don't say luckily, I, I think that you'd find this anywhere along the, 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 the process. And maybe it was because of the way I was brought up and I was brought up in a home where you you go where you're needed. You, you, your job is to serve the people, whatever capacity. So you don't get into something. And that affected me. It, it didn't affect you know other people in the family in the same way, but it affected me uh, greatly. I remember being a child and my, my dream was to be able to to house all of the poor people on the planet as you know, but that's a child's idea. That's, that was how my mentality was as, you know, mm -hmm. um, but when, when um, uh, I left 
Morehouse, and then I stayed there an additional year. When, when I left Morehouse, um, and we had studied some independent African centered institutions, and one of the things that we discovered was that they were not able to survive on just tuition alone. They had to have other sources of income. So when when um, when I left Morehouse and Akaben um, was started, which is a whole other story, but when Akaben started, uh, I had to sit down and think, okay, what is it that I do that I love to do that when I do it, I'm, I'm in another place. I'm, I'm into this this work and the, the world is, is no longer there. And there were two things that, that um, I can say that that applied. And one was chess and the other was writing. So I, I sat down, I started, I started teaching chess to some independent institutions, but I, I started writing and it flowed. It just flowed. And the writing came about as a result of questions that I felt hadn't been answered in the community. The first book was the chess primer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was one of the schools that I taught at. It was really a very, very uh, poor institution in terms of the, the finances of the, the children and their, their parents. And I wanted them to get a copy of Bobby Fisher Teaches Chess, which was like seven something at, at the store. And some of them could not afford that mm -hmm. out of their budget if they wanted you know, to eat. So I sat down and wrote the chess primer. And then, of course, it clicked. You write based upon the needs of the community. So uh, the second thing that happened, and these, I think there are events that propel us to deal with certain issues or topics or themes in the community and to explain them, not that you're saying anything new, but explain them in a way that you think that people can understand them better. Um, the, 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 the year that I was no longer at Morehouse, but I was still a faculty. I just wasn't teaching. Uh, the, the young man who became the SGA president, he asked me to do his, um, his speech, his, his, his inaugural speech. And I said, okay. So I, I talked about Negroes and I explained yeah. you know, what they were and all the rest of this. And a young man, and I'm pretty sure he was a freshman. Uh, he came up to me and said, you know, I, I don't mean to ask a dumb question. He said, but what are Negroes? And it clicked. Oh, these guys haven't been in my class. They mm. not, are not familiar with what I'm saying. So that caused the writing of Negroes and other essays, which was mm. my second book. The third book, Excuses, Excuses, came about because of a summer session with some prospective students in the Atlanta University Center. And we were talking about interracial stuff. And, and of course, me, I have major issues with it. And one of the students, young men, got up and he said, yeah, well, I read a study that said that black men and Asian women have a better sexual fit than any other group. And I'm, I'm, this, this is the first time I laughed at a student. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. But you know, I'm, I'm laughing. And another student on the other side of the room said, yeah, that's true. I read that same study. So that caused me to begin to look at the reasons that were being given as to why this made sense. And of course, these were all excuses. And it took me back to childhood when people say excuses, excuses. Yeah. So that led to that. So it's like each one, I can look at each book mm -hmm. and I can see a source in terms of a question that needed to be answered in the community or a need in the community. And they weren't, this wasn't a conscious search. The question just came. So, so um, and, and I'm saying this because the, the, the I don't know if it's a love of writing, but a need, like what you do, you're not doing what you do because of the, the, the paycheck. You're doing what you do because you're compelled to do it. There's, there's, right. there's no choice. So for, for me, writing as I write, I'm, I don't I don't really have a choice. I'm miserable when I'm not writing. And any I will tell you, she she doesn't even like to be in the same vicinity with me when when I haven't you know done any editing for two or three weeks. I'm, I'm miserable. Um, but it's that's not what. Um, um, compels me to write what I write. I, I'll give us uh, one other example. Uh, you reason. Um, mm -hmm. One of one of my uh, friends who was a grandfather to to us to, to two of the students here. Well, one of the students here in Ankabin. We we he come every morning and we talk for a little while. And then he'd leave. You know, school would begin. Um, and he said he, he finished up college, but he never took his social science course and he didn't have to, I believe it's because he was in the military and you can bypass some courses having been in the military. So he said, is there a book out there that deals with, you know, social sciences or what have you from an African centered perspective? And I thought for a day or two and I said, it came, I said, no, there isn't. That caused the writing of your reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you look at different aspects of the social sciences from an African centered perspective. Of course, 
this my brother, he was he was insistent. So as soon as the book came out, I ran and gave him a copy. And he said, OK, well, where is the class? I'm like, what? <laughs> you can't satisfy this man. And that <laughs> to the very first Occupant Institute course. Wow. OK. Which was, which was your reason. So it's like everything is triggered by something, a demand, a request, an unanswered question um, in the community. Um, but the, the, the writing, um, if, if you want to provide, the, 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 you have to have a tool or a means of providing guidance for those who are trying to find their way. You know, we can't, we know we can't make anyone African, but what we can do is we have a responsibility to deliver the word, right. we have a responsibility to tell. So you hold those classes and there might be one, one person in that class who gets it because they need it. But that one, that was what that class was for, that, mm -hmm. that, that individual. Um, so the, 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 the books themselves, the courses, all the rest of that, they came from that. Now for, um, those who want to know the, the, the long and short of, of writing for me, then I wrote that in a book called Sesh, which came from questions just like what you asked. What? Well, yes. It's, <laughs> it's, well, oh, and the picture, the brother on the cover, that's the one I was talking about who asked about okay. the book. That's yeah, he's an ancestor now. And oh, the young, okay. yeah, that I wanted to show wisdom being passed on. Mm -hmm. Um so the the um uh whatever it is that is your is your talent or um you know they say your vocation is your your main occupation and your avocation is what you know you do on the side. So whether it's your avocation, you know, or your vocation in terms of writing. Um, there, are, there are things that are required for that, and and one to me, one of the most important or two things. Number one, you're not a you're not a commander of time. You don't you don't dictate time. We, I want a book done in a year, and it might take three years. The other one is you need to have patience with 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 yourself okay. in doing this writing, and you need to listen to what you write in terms of who the audience is, and mm -hmm. and um, you and I aren't that far away from each other in age so i know that we both and where you came up at mm -hmm. you, know, you 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 heard heard people um uh say that you must speak in the language of the people you're talking to or they're not gonna understand you and i remember that you know from 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 childhood uh but you have to have patience with yourself in terms of being able to articulate on paper mm -hmm. what the audience is and for me the audience is warriors you know, any, anyone else may get it and it may, you know, they may need it, maybe even more than some of the warriors do. But um, when you identify your audience, fine tuning these things makes the writing so much um, easier, so much, I don't know, satisfying is the word, but, you know, it makes it so much easier because when you, your direction is, is, is clear, when it's laid out for you, then it it makes that creative process um, so much easier. And I, I love the way Toni Morrison said, you yes. know, to be writing the same thing over and over again or, or to be answering questions that have already been answered or, you know, no matter what you say, somebody's going to come back with the same dumb question again. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have that focus, th then you can write clearly. And I, I, I don't have any issues with deviation from that focus. I knew who I write. I know my ancestors. I know who my warrior ancestors are. I know what they would say about this sentence that I just wrote. Right. So you know that that is that is critical. The the, the um, let's say the, the actual writing it yourself, your pen, your your keyboard or whatever. That's secondary or tertiary. Okay. That's 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 you know um, not as important as you you living in the comfort of being. Uh, OK, for me, living in the comfort of being a warrior on the front line, using the talent that you have to deliver the word and you deliver the word and you keep on trucking. That's something any I used to always say, you know, deliver the word, deliver the word, deliver the word. Said, that war. I love that war album by um, War when the name of the album was Deliver the Word. Uh, but for me, I've added on there and keep on trucking because mm -hmm. you can get so bogged down in trying to prove a point that you forget all of the other things that need to be addressed. So really 
uh, Urugu Unix, even though I like the book and I know that it did what it was supposed to do, it didn't even need to be done because I had already clarified that in the sex imperative and homosexuality and feminization of African males. Mm -hmm. I was the, 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 because the issue kept being brought up, I said, mm -hmm. well, let me do something else to it, which I didn't need to do because it had already been answered, you know, in the previous um, works. And don't, and kind of like halfway at writer, writer's advice, don't, um, don't get caught up in not being, in, in, in feeling that, um, well, no, let me say it another way. There were four books that I wrote that started out in other books, but the, the topics of those books became so heavy within whatever I was writing that they broke off into another book. Mm -hmm. That wasn't so much the problem. The problem came when I'm trying to complete both of those books at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you'll get, you'll get talking about stress. Mm -hmm. You, because you, you know that both of those need to get out. You know that both of those messages need to get delivered. Um, but you, 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 you're not two people. Right. And the first time that happened, I remember um, talking to my mom in graduate school about being frustrated because there were so many things that I needed to get done. And she said simply, the important stuff was sift its way up to the top. Mm -hmm. She got off the phone, you know, and I'm <laughs> looking at these, you know, these three books I'm working on at that time. And uh, at the time that memory, that, that thought came back and I'm saying, OK, what's the most important? And I was okay. able to then go back to working on one book. And the, this, this is a complaint that I've heard from, you know, many writers. Uh, I said, well, that means that this other book needs to be written later or after that or some other time. It don't, it's not going anywhere because you separate it. So there have been chapters and books that I've written that turned into books in and of themselves because they grew too large for. It's sort of mm -hmm. like, you know, Malcolm grew too large for the nation. Mm -hmm. You know? It didn't, it didn't just take anything away from the nation, but Malcolm had to do his own, you know, thing. Um, so the, the, the writing process, uh, hmm, I, I guess I would e not equate it, but um, it, it, it parallels in many ways the complementarity process. When you, if, you, if you're looking for, when you're looking for a compliment, you're looking for somebody who's politically in line with you. To me, mm -hmm. that's first and foremost. Somebody who is about the business of commitment. They're not coming to play. They're coming because they, they want to commit to something and they want to build something. So the, the same thing applies to um, writing where the, the, the politics is always what comes first. That's always the, 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 the foundation of whatever it is that we say. So you have to figure out before you, before you step into it, even though it's going to evolve, you have to understand your politics. Mm -hmm. What is it you're trying to say? Are we at war? And if so, you know, who are we at war with? Right. Uh, and I said to the audience, you know, who are we writing to? We're writing to our, our warriors. We're writing to our army. We're writing to those individuals who are going to build in those different places because now we're not in our all in one space. We're, we're spread out all over the place. But those, um, the, the, the ones who are doing the real work in those different places, they, they need to know that they're on the right path. Not that they were ever questioned what they're doing, but it's lonely. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's nice to have affirmations. You know, okay, well, yeah, he's as crazy as I am. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, that 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 is is um I guess one of the, the driving things for me. Um I have encountered many people, and you gotta let me know if I get off if I'm getting on track, but mm -hmm. I have encountered many people who have uh who who uh, at one time, you know, either ready to give up or, or quit or what have you because they didn't see anything around them that resembled, you know, African sanity. Mm -hmm. uh, one sister, she wasn't in Denver. She was somewhere in Idaho. And she mm -hmm. was there because, you know, she's she's making like seven figures. Mm -hmm. and, but she's clear. And she's the only one of us in that town. And she's she said she was on the verge of 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 giving up. And she saw one of my books in a garage sale on her wow. street. And, you know, she didn't know she liked the topic and she went home and she read it and she's like, oh, okay, I'm good now. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that it's not, it's not me, you know, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's them. Um, so, you know, and 
uh, I want to say for me, the writing in a way has been um, fun in the sense that now uh, I'm hearing back from people who read something, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And that, that also can be an issue for a lot of people where they don't see the immediate effect mm -hmm. of, of what they're doing. And it's, it's perfect story. I tell this story so much. When I was at Morehouse, I was teaching a class called Men in Society. And in this class, I'm talking about black stuff from day one to, to the last day of class. And there was this young man from Philadelphia, very dark skinned young man. He sat mm -hmm. in the corner in the back on the left side by the window. I can see him now. And he would go to sleep in class. And then every once in a while you hear him say, oh, here we go with this black stuff again. You know, and he say it loud enough, but not loud enough so I could, you know, do anything. And he left Morehouse um, after that quarter. And sadly, the main reason that he gave me for leaving Morehouse is because he was made fun of because of the, his complaint. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so he went back to uh, University of Pennsylvania and um, I didn't expect to ever hear from this guy. He, like I said, he earned that F. He, he worked very, very hard for that F. And I never expected to hear from him again. I said, okay, super Negro on, you know, on the way to development. Uh, about five, maybe six years later, I come back at the end of the summer and I listen to the messages on my phone in the office. And he says, he's he's on one of the messages. He says, you know, I got a copy of Urugu. I'm reading it. I'm trying to digest it, but there's some things in here I don't understand. So I'll give you a call back later. He never called back again. But you can imagine the level of shock that really? I was in. Yeah. Because you, know, really? <laughs> yeah, you don't know. You, 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 mm -hmm. you can't. And usually on something like this, something this serious, something this life changing to mm -hmm. be African, you, you're often you're not going to see the impact of that 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years right. down the road. So we have to have that, that patience and we have to put our heart and soul into what we say to our people, um, knowing which, which brings up another elder in the community. He asked us one time, well, "How are you guys doing? How's it? How's everything going in Ackerman?" I said, "You know, I said we're we're, we're trying." He he got he got angry visibly. He got mm -hmm. angry. He mm -hmm. said, "You're not trying. You're doing." And I've never said we're trying again. <laughs> you know, I said no. You 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 affirm this into existence. Affirm this knowing. You know. So when you when you put that down on paper, and don't assume that the kind of writing has to be a particular kind of writing that has got to deal with a particular, you know, topic or, or subject area. Your center will come out in your writing. Mm -hmm. Your politics will come through in your words and how you say it and all the rest of it. It's, it's, it's going to be, you know, said, it's going to be um, understood by the individual or individuals or groups who need it. You know, and this is, this is a need. If, if it wasn't based on need, well, I, I guess, uh, I remember John Henry Clark saying one time, well, you know, I, I, I could have been a millionaire, you know, easily, but I use that energy, you know, for my people. And I said, well, mm -hmm. I could have been a millionaire too. If that's, that's what I wanted. Right. But that's not, that's not the, 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 that wasn't the goal here. The goal here was to assist mm -hmm. uh, my people in to the best of my ability. Um, so we, we don't, we don't, our, our vision is greater than that. Um, our, we're, we're, we're not what we write. We're not concerned so much about the. Um, yes, that's why it's so important for us to do mm -hmm. all we do from <laughs> genuine. Yes, I to put yeah. that in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can, you, you know, you know, it makes your life so much easier. There's so there's so much stress is removed when you're being honest, uncompromising, truthful. You know, okay, it's it's sort of like, well, if you're gonna kill me, kill me, but I'm not gonna sit here and, and lie to my people in the process. You're gonna kill me whether I lie to them or tell them the truth. So let me tell them the truth. Yeah, that's Ida B. Wells. But that was one of the uh things that she said as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you were speaking, it you were reminding me so much of uh, Mama Tony Morrison mm -hmm. because uh -huh. she said if there's a book you want to read that hasn't been written, write it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes. you know, and and I write for black people. I don't apologize for that. She was clear mm -hmm. about her audience and she wasn't going to, you know, let society mm -hmm. bully her into mm -hmm. anything else. And, um, you know, cause you, you always say everything is political mm -hmm. and, um, uh, it made me think of that quote that I love that I share 
that she said books are political. You know, mm -hmm. they can change your mind. And so, you know, we got all this madness with banned books and all this stuff trending mm -hmm. and going around about, well, books, you know, if it, it persuades you to do this, then it will. Mm -hmm. We all know that everything is political. Mm -hmm. So don't mm -hmm. try to muddy the water and tell us that, you know, there's nothing wrong with reading this because as a librarian, I will tell you that there are. And mm -hmm. I always, always say, say that this is a safe space. Our books are safe. Mm -hmm. They're what we need. Um, you know, even fiction. Uh, yes. I have to really, really uh, find, you know, fine tooth it, you know, fine comb it with, because mm -hmm. there's so much out now that, mm -hmm. um, that the children's books, board mm -hmm. books, baby books, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be careful of and really pay attention to what mm -hmm. we're looking at, reading, watching, mm -hmm. listening to all that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I um, when you were speaking, it, it just really reminded me a lot of, of Mama Tony Morrison mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and her, um, what she did when she was here writing. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to talk a little bit, you mentioned it, uh, complementarity. Um, mm -hmm because this is one of my favorite books. I do read it uh, every year. Uh, I read it at least once a year, just because, <laughs> just because you know, uh, this season in my life where I am, and mm -hmm. it really um, it really inspires me and keeps me hopeful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, it's okay. because my the message to me is, you know, you do the work. If mm -hmm. you're righteously, like Sister Mila said, if you're righteously doing the work, and you really have a desire for a compliment, then mm -hmm. don't cross it's paths funny. with someone that's yeah. doing the work as well. And I, I believe that I'm not, you know, and I, I that's well, that's any of favorite book. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I from and when I was getting ready to send it to the printers, I said, well, you know, I asked her, could I put her name on it? Because you know, when when you're with someone, it's not just your thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, you know, she's like, no, you wrote it, you and some some things I know better than to argue with my wife about. <laughs> uh, but it's it's like it's her favorite book and i firmly believe i mean we we sit here and we witness um sisters in particular but also brothers who uh they've been they've had the patience they and they they haven't deviated from their politics uh and they know that there is somebody there for them who's got the right mind mm -hmm. and we've seen something um I say remarkable occurring over like the last 10 years, which we we weren't seeing before in terms of folks finding um, each other because they are they are doing the work. And Enya, she talks more about that, much more about that than 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 I do. Um, but that that book, again, came about really because I was dismayed mm -hmm. at what I saw, not just in the conscious community, but particularly in the Atlanta conscious community, we saw so many divorces among people who spoke to be conscious and so many, and you know, people can, there can be good reasons for divorce, but mm -hmm. um, we saw the wrong people getting together. And yeah. I said, we saw the wrong people having children together. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, apparently we don't understand how this is supposed to ideally operate. So that caused the writing of complementarity. And I wanted to write it in an order. This is the natural, logical, historical sequence of how we have done this as a people. Now, you can do it in whatever way you want to, just like anything else. But don't try to claim to be African if you're not following the pattern of our ancestors. Right. That, that, that to me, in any area, this, you know, should be the truth. Um, and I, I really like the outcome. We had uh, couples who you know, drove to the commentary conference from North Carolina, from New York, who read the book to each other as they're driving along or read the book together. And I'm like, you guys are kind of nuts, you know, you, but, but, I, you know, I got, I got the importance of, of the book to them. Mm -hmm. there, there are two sisters I know who, whenever they go and a brother, I know who, uh, whenever they're interested in somebody, they give the person commentary and have them read it before anything goes on and see their response. Really? To it, and that'll determine. Mm -hmm. And that, that caused me to make a, a meme that said um, the litmus test, you mm -hmm. know, had a picture of, of the book that was based on that. Um, but even though I, I really like the book, um, I really like the impact that it continues to have on people. Um, I really like how that book 
even though others also, that book in a sense remains t- timeless for me because there's there's nothing in there that anyone can claim has become outdated unless you want to just say right. we're outdated in terms of our tradition. But one thing that it led, uh, because so many questions came uh, out of that, because Enya and I do do coaching slash counseling. You can't say counseling anymore, but we we do we do couples coaching, and one of the um, questions that keep coming up is how do you sustain, mm-hmm. you know, a relationship? How do you how do you do that? And that caused the writing of complementarity notes, mm-hmm. which, um, so I, when I look at complementarity, I look at that as the theory. And even though it's more than theory, as far as I'm concerned, I look at that as a theory and I look at complementary notes as the practice because mm-hmm. it's full of how to sustain, how to maintain. And I don't see either one as better than the other. I just see them, them as complementarity, you know, right. books, they, they, they work together. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the guidelines, of course, uh, and of course you can, you can find our, our parents didn't have complementarity, you know, to read. They had common sense. Right. <laughs> they, they, they yeah. had this, you know, whatever you did to keep, get her or him, you had to keep doing to keep him or him, her, you know, it, it was, it was like, you know, common, common sense. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the knowing that what you made with your hands was more important than what you bought from the store because it shows you put some time, energy, and effort into me. You know, um, we, we in, in judging um, compliments or the quality of the relationship, uh, we have to really go back to basics. Whatever we do, we have to strip away this capitalist, if you will, um, and I, I do mean that, but I say, if you will, in terms of folks not understanding the, the depth of that, um, this, this capitalist, selfish, materialistic reality, you know, that that has to be that has to be shared. That shouldn't be brought into the home. That shouldn't be brought into a relationship. That shouldn't be a measure of the quality of the relationship with the person that you are with. I, t- I say all the time when, when and and Enya and I haven't had this perfect thing. We've had our ups and downs, just like every other couple I've talked to. Um, I have yet to meet one. And I, I tell folks all the time: you meet a couple for for counsel, whatever, and they say we've never had any issues. I say run, right? You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. we were in we were in Chicago. I was you know in grad school, and I was broke. I had you know nothing. And uh, we at that time we celebrating Valentine's Day and Christmas and all the rest of that, and um the the day before valentine's day you know i I, i've always made her cards all all the cards i've ever given her in the last 30 some years i made Mm -hmm. so i made her a card um but there was nothing for me to put into her hand there was no other way and i was of course feeling bad about that because i'm was still into uh diamonds and gold and all the rest of that Mm -hmm. and so i got up looked in the the refrigerator and there was a um, it didn't have too much in it, but there was some eggs and there was some um, Parks sausage. Mm-hmm. And I took the park sausage and I cut it into slices and I shaped them into hearts. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I scrambled some eggs, made her a plate, and she was like, you know, overjoyed. And I, yeah. I, I didn't get overjoyed, but it was it was the thought. And mm-hmm. that's what it re-registered to me. It is the ancestors, you know, they had they had something that said the thought it's the thought that counts. It is the thought yes. Yes. that counts. Yes, we, we forget that. Yes, we think it's the money that counts. Right. You know. Right. Um, so there, there are basic, fundamental, I think, uh, commonsensical things that have to be brought back into relationships if they are going to um, survive. And one of them, right. of course, is something I've already mentioned. You, when you, when you're looking, then you're looking for commitment, and you're bringing commitment. Mm-hmm. The idea, you know, of commitment. The, 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 Grown children, you know, grown males, grown females want to do nothing but play. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not you're not building anything. Right. I don't, I don't, whether that's a, a potential compliment or not. You know, for me, if I was in that that um, situation, they don't even qualify to to to, um, you know, waste my time with. Um, the, the and of course, the the other is um, basic stuff. We, we, we always got to take take things and, and take them to um, a level beyond what is necessary as if more somehow proves it even better when the simplest stuff 
-hmm. you know, that's something I talk about in complimentary notes. Look at your talents. Okay, so you, you're, you're a DJ or and you like to make beats. Well, then make a, a CD dedicated solely to her, you know, that deals with what have you, you know, mm -hmm. in, in terms of your relationships and what you know that she likes and, and all the rest of that. You, you know how to uh, um, sew, then, you know, make him a seat where he can sit close to Sasia, Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that'll be like his seat. And he, you know, you you took the time out of your day and you didn't have the time to do that for that, you know, individual. We, we got to look at whatever our talent. Yes. Whatever our talents are, mm -hmm. we need to took, take those and apply those to that person when it's not necessary. OK, you're good at, you know, all these examples, you, you, you're good at wax, washing and waxing cars. Well, you wash and wax your car, you wash and wax her car. She, she didn't ask you to do it. She, you didn't need to do it. But that's supposed to be was it from the heart, right? Coming straight from the heart, and I right. think that's the cement. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the cement. It, it is. You know, we're not so weak that we have to be told every day, twenty four seven. You know, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But you know, even, even though that does sound good when it's coming from the heart, we we we're still um, people, and we like to receive gifts. You know, we like we like to be um, the, the the greatest advice. And any I received it long before I did, but and she would tell me about it. And of course, I wouldn't respect it the way that it, it should have been respected until it became my possession, mm -hmm. which was from an elder um, brother, the one that's on the cover of the book. And he said, mm -hmm. hug each other every day. Mm. He said, hug each other every day. He said, I don't care. I don't care how mad you are at each other. He mm -hmm. said, hug each other. Every day, and don't you know, not know, you know, no, hug each other every mm -hmm. day, and that works wonders, you know, not just for the relationship, but for your emotional well being, all the mm -hmm. rest of that. So, you, you're caring for that person's emotional well being, and there are thousands of things like that, yeah, you know, depending upon the people and the personality. We make we make relationship too complicated, complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> way, way too complicated, and it's really, it's really. Simple. It's just a matter to me. If if you you can marry anybody, you can be with anybody, any height, any weight, you know, any region, what have you, um, and you can you know technically make make it work. But if you are trying to fight for the liberation, empowerment, and sovereignty of African people, if you're talking about being on the front line, then the politics is supposed to be you know the number one thing, and it's it's. Um, Told my daughter all the time, never settle. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, the politics of of, of it, you know, well, the political foundation. Well, Thought to me, and I don't have a fly, but I got this little thing in here. <laughs> I, <got this> <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get to say it's one of the one of the ancestors, someone trying to make sure they in the conversation. <laughs> um the to me, there are four and I believe they're in complementary and in complementary notes, but they they involve valuing family, valuing you know procreation, valuing uh, uh, family. Whether whether you know the person already has children or you want to have children, whatever children are supposed to be valued. The yeah. structure of the family is supposed to be supposed to be valued. And and you know if, if you if you have children and the person is coming, then you should it should be evident. You're just not uh, dating me, if you will. You're dating us. Mm -hmm. This is this is a family situation. I also need to that politics, understanding who the enemy is, mm -hmm. both of you equally. OK, so, you know, she says, you know, I don't deal with Urugu. I understand what they've done. Blah, 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 blah. And he says, yeah, I don't I don't deal with Urugu either. But I have, you know, a couple of Urugu friends. That's that's your politics are not the same. Your politics are, are extremely different. Um so that that has to be perfectly in line. Another one of the, the issues is you both have to be workers. Mm -hmm. You have to be one person, you know, and people work uh, at different speeds. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can't compare one type of work to another type of work that's completely different than that type. Um, but, the, you know, the, you have to believe both people have to believe that it's, it's their job. To buy, it's their job single handedly to in, in, uh, in sovereign African people, even though you know one person can't do. But you, you have to come with that that vision, and which is another part you have, uh, have to have a victorious vision. But I wanted to do that work thing for uh, a, a second because we, mm -hmm. we really we really have to uh, 
I, I, I find I find with with um, brothers more so than sisters, and um, I think I can talk about brothers because I'm a brother. Um, where they we have a tendency to um, measure a sister's input based upon where we're at and what we do. Mm. And when she's not doing the same thing at the same rate, then that's troubling to us. And we want to we want to critique that. Uh, and there's there's a lot to go with that conversation. But I find that, uh, and in fact, well, I I give Baba Hannibal Afrik, who is an ancestor, and he's he's he, Jared Clark, maybe a, a couple others are like my most important ancestors to me in mm -hmm. terms of models. Mm -hmm. And he um, um, told us one time that um, he, he he was talking about the importance of warriors taking breaks together away from everything, everybody. I think that's extremely important. I think it's extremely productive for, for complementary couples. And he said that um, he was upset with his wife. They weren't they weren't getting along. He said he was upset with his wife because he felt that the the fire that she had um, wasn't there anymore. She wasn't working as hard, you know, toward the empowerment of African people as he was. And he was, you know, that was like, you know, really disturbing him. Mm -hmm. So his wife went and talked to some elders and um, they said, well, we, you know, we need to see both of you. And they finally got him to come. And he came and they said, he said, you need to go get a room. <laughs> and, you know, he finally agreed. So they went and got a, got a, got a room and, you know, she, she took her uh, luggage up and he was taught, took his luggage up and she's putting stuff on those cheap hangers in the hotel room. And he's on the other side of the room. He's unpacking this stuff. And she turns around and look, he's pulling out of his suitcase, notebooks. Work. <laughs> yeah, he's pulling work out of his, and, and she said, Oh no, we're not, we're, we're not, we're not doing that. Not today. Mm -hmm. And he said that was the best time that he had, you know, during that time. And that really helped him to understand, you know, she was a woman. Mm -hmm. that, that her way of looking at things and how she assessed what work needed to be done was very different than his. Mm -hmm. And we have to we have to understand that the there's a difference between men and women. The differences are real and the differences are good. You know, right. they, they are exceptionally good. Right. Uh, I I wouldn't want to be with anybody like me. You know? <laughs> this is no. Um, so the uh, need to take that break, and no matter who we're coaching slash counseling, that's always part of the um, assignment mm -hmm. that they need to develop on a weekly basis. Find you some uh, an evening that's yours. Nobody else, none of the children, nobody. That's just your time. I don't care if you watch a movie or if you sit there and eat cheese and crackers or you walk around the park or, uh, you know, you just go out and drive downtown. You know, there, there needs to be that time every week so that you all can be just with you. And then, of course, there needs to be the real break where maybe once every quarter or once every half year you 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 get away. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the Caribbean, even though that may be nice. I'm not talking about the Caribbean. Enya and I's first time doing this, we found a hotel on the other side of the Atlanta metro area in an area that we were not familiar with. So no matter where we looked, we didn't see anything that reminded us of work. You know, nothing. So we we were there for two and two and a half, three days. And it it took it, it took a half a day to decompress mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, from the from the work without thinking about oh, this needs to be done, that needs to be done, and start seeing each other there. And it, it made really made um, a difference. It, it really made a difference. But the other point has to do with the vision. You, you both must have a victorious vision. And I've heard that from a number of, of scholars. I'd read that from a number of scholars before I wrote complementarity. And as I you know, say back in the day, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, but I heard that from enough who I respected, or at least at that time, I respected to see that as an important value, because if you believe that, then it get rid of, rid of all of what in sociology we call tremendous trifles, you know, little silly stuff. So uh, a number of years ago, a number of, of couples asked us, you know, what, what is keeping you and any out together? And um, I said, umbrella, the um, um, there's an umbrella of Pan-African nationalism 
that is is greater than both of us. That's our ideal. That's our first and foremost priority. So all the little stuff, little nitpicky, whatever stuff that keeps us arguing or whatever from time to time, we still know even while we're arguing, we know we're not going anywhere because it's umbrella. And we know that the umbrella is going to resolve it because the people are more important than me leaving the cap on the toothpaste, you know, every day. Right. You know, but some people, be, because of that materialism and not having that vision, that cap off the toothpaste becomes like the most critical issue in their lives. You know, that, that becomes the most important thing. So we, when, you, when you have that, to me, that's part of the politics. Mm -hmm. The politics is that vision. I believe yeah. if I believe that African people will be sovereign. If not, then there's no need to do this. I said, I was to get my 40, my line of coke and just head to the club. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense wasting my time being stressed over African people for nothing. Just go out and party. You know, but that that vision, once that vision crystallizes, once once you understand the magnitude of that vision, once you understand that there's no separation between you and that vision, once you understand that that means to be African, as my marimba Asa Hillier would say, to be African means that this is you. There's, there's no, this isn't some ideal out there in space someplace. No, no, no. This is you. You are, when we talk about my eye, you're supposed to be my eye. You're supposed to be that. You know, it's, it's not some ideal. Yes, I know that there are symbols. Yes, I know that there are, you know, deities associated with it, et cetera, et cetera. But those are symbolic of what you're supposed to be about. So for me, that's like complementarity. That's one of the principles of my eye. If you are not involved in a relationship, then that should be that should not be something that you dismiss and say, well, I'm not even going to be thinking about that ever. No, it should be something that if it comes along, not if when it comes along, that you are still prepared for that, even though you are involved in doing uh, the work, mm -hmm. you know, along with that. So the the. Um, the requirements of good complementarity, all of those things, to me, that they involve the, the, the um, politics. Mm -hmm. You know, we we, we yeah. are we are child family centered people. So how can you come into a quote unquote African centered relationship talking about I don't want any children? You know that that, that to me is completely totally anti African. Right. Now, if you already have 10, 15 children, okay, I can understand. I don't want any more. But mm -hmm. not, I don't want any children. You know, and that's Wait. sad in terms of the future, Mom, because of what I hear from so many children. When you ask them, do you want to have mm -hmm. children? Do you? Do yes. You, you know, and the whole um, the whole sentiment that motherhood is a burden now. Mm hmm. Um, and I saw a sister, she said she won't, she will never let society allow her to think that motherhood is a burden. It's a divine assignment. Absolutely. And that was the perfect description mm -hmm. for me, a divine assignment. And mm -hmm. I just want to say before I forget, congratulations on oh. your, your new addition. To yeah, we're happy. We're, we're very happy. Didn't have to do the work. Yes. And we're happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and, and, and so, you know, and that's, and that's frightening to me to, to mm -hmm. hear so many young people say mm -hmm. that they don't want children because you know we have to understand nation building and right. that is the foundation family is the foundation of a nation it and uh, so you know it's, it's just one of the things that we're trying to incorporate you know at Ashley Academy and I sh I'm sure you all do it mm -hmm. as well um, the whole notion of nation building you know what is it what does it look like why do we need to do it uh, you know, our whole motto is on learning to remember teaching to nation build because that's what it is. It's about the survival of our people. And I wanted you to talk about um, to educate the people um, because I, I think with everything that's going on now with CRT and the books and censorship and all that, the importance of us really understanding that we can take control of our own education mm -hmm. is necessary. It's necessary to build our own institutions uh, and, and, and what that looks like for us and why it's needed. And I say otherwise we're, we're lost or we're, we'll be more lost uh, because the movement is away from us knowing who we are. Once they recognize that we were waking up, then they put all the effort and energy into putting us back to sleep. 
That's right. Uh, we we were asked uh, years ago um, at an education conference. You know, what is what's what's the purpose? What is Occupant Institute trying to do? Mm-hmm. And I said we are trying to produce the kind of of warrior or to say warrior in training who if he and she were left on an island by themselves or they woke up and there was nobody on this planet, no one on this planet except for them, that they would create society. They would create civilization that would be African because they would know exactly what it means to be African. They wouldn't, unless you're taught what it means to be African, unless you understand what being African is, then there's no way you can create that. Right. And that's, that's not what their, their curriculum, that's not what they're uh, attempting to do. And folks need right. to read Amos and Wilson. On it. They need to read all of his stuff. And yep. I, I, I want to say, especially the the even though I love all of his works, especially um, now his um, the psychology of self hatred and self defeat. He it, 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 it sums up, and I know this is published posthumously, but still, it's it's a it's a phenomenal um, book. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, if you know they have an agenda, they've always had an agenda, and and their agenda is for us not to be where they're at. For us to be less than who we are, for us not to know who we are. And the only way that we're going to be able to know who we are is for us to teach ourselves. That's right. That's that's why the family has been the primary institution that they have attempted to destroy. Right. Because if, if you can, if you if you can put us into educational institutions that teach us to be something other than who we are, that teaches us to be shadows of you, imitators of you, but without the power then and accompany that with destroying the family structure so that you're not socialized at home because you're going to be socialized somewhere. Right. If you're not socialized at home. You're going to be socialized in the media accompanied yeah. by socialization in the schools. Yeah. And in the schools, as you just pointed out, they're moving us in the, in the completely and totally opposite direction. We, we came here looking for jobs, you know, that, that type of mentality. Yeah. But when, when you, and to come back to not Amos and Wilson, one of the points that he repeatedly makes in, in his books is that white children come into the classroom and it's the same material that they're getting. Even in the class with the same material they're getting, white children get com- something completely different from the material that the black children do. White children get, this is how, this is the road to power. This is what I need to understand in order to be power. This is what I need to understand to be in this position where I'm at the top. Black children come in and, and they may get survival mentality and they get an image of where they're supposed to be, which is beneath. So you you can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not an advocate of the public school system. I understand the need for it in terms of the number of us that there is. What I don't understand is that is why we're not developing more independent schools of Rome. Mm-hmm. That I do not understand, especially right. with all of the conversations that I, that I hear and I read. There should be an independent African Center institution next door to every church in our communities. Right. Okay. Whatever house is next to it, they should be. You know, when we have as many independent African Center institutions as we have churches, then mm-hmm. I say <laughs> I, I can transition in peace. Right. It's, 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 uh, mind boggling to me. And they have convinced so many of us that we can't do this, that we're not qualified to teach our children. Exactly. You know, and for me, it's like with, 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 uh, with teaching chess. If I know the names of the pieces, mm. I can teach you the names of the pieces where I'm learning how they move. And then I can teach you how the pieces move while I'm learning a few strategies and tactics and on and on and on. So I'm a, a good teacher is going to, going to stay ahead of their students anyway. In terms of mm-hmm. the material that they present, because the students are gonna learn, gonna learn quick. We, right. we, we don't think that we're qualified to do things. The, the, the people who have been, to me, the most successful in teaching, running um, independent schools are not the ones that have the credentials, even though for me, the credentials are irrelevant. It's the ones who love the children. Exactly. Is the ones who want to empower African people. Those are the ones who are the most successful. Those are the ones that you see the children running to and hugging because they know that they're getting truth from those individuals, whether they have the credentials or not. My my, my grandmother, I was, I think she maybe fourth grade, maybe. I'm not mm-hmm. even too sure about that. But she mm-hmm. runs circles around me when it comes to our story. Yeah. But she, you know, she understands, she knows. And but most institutions that I'm aware of wouldn't even allow her in the door. Right. You know. Right. We have to return to that. Um, in in the sixties and seventies, they came out with the community university. It, it became you know popular community university concept, especially in like D.C. and Philly, New York, 
uh, Chicago, you know, some places in that area. The, the, the concept of community university became um, very big. Mm-hmm. And even though then I didn't see it as being as grassroots as it should have been because it was mainly a function of, uh, I'll say, HBCUs extending out into the community. So yeah. it's still their authority, their politics, their priorities, and their priorities are not us. And I, I'm going right. to say that having taught at two HBCUs. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's, they're not our priorities. They are about the business of producing Negroes, people who will fit into this society and work well in this society and still continue with the self-hatred. Right. Um, but we need to reinstitute the community concept where it begins within the community. And those people who... Ah, School is supposed to teach you how to survive. Mm-hmm. School is supposed to teach you how to become the best possible, uh, if you will, citizen that you can be. And I say citizen of the Pan African Pan African nation. Um, to me, that requires everything. So if there's if there's a, a, a elderly sister in the community who knows how to can, mm-hmm. that should be part of the curriculum. Right. That should be part of what's being taught. That should be part of the requirement. Knowing how to garden. We survived the Great Depression because we were connected to the land, not because we had right. money. That's the only reason we survived. And I tell right. you of course, all the time, you can't eat your Lexus. <laughs> right. You know, exactly. You yeah, you can't eat that. So the 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 idea of a community university to me is, yes, you, you, you could have situations where, let's say, uh, you, you have a, a, a house in, in, in Delaware somewhere and you have a community of, of Africans, Black folks there who want to want to learn a part of community university and, and you all take one floor of, of a house and you turn it into a visiting scholars place and you bring mama Rimba up there for the summer and you feed her and you, you do whatever it is that she needs while she teaches mm-hmm. everybody who comes there for two months and she gives them her heart. She gives them everything that she knows. They said, when you get, when they get finished with mama Rimba, they're going to understand the Sealy concept. They're going to understand all of the, they're going to cosmology. They're going to understand all of that when they get finished with her. And that's something they're not even going to get in a college university. Right. You know, from somebody who is centered. Okay. Now, all of the people who are responsible for education within this community university system, either local or regional or national or what have you, international, everyone who is a part of that, then they are, as they say, vetted by the individuals who put this together. Because if they're not centered, then they don't need to be anywhere near our children. They need don't need to be anywhere near um, our adults. Uh, this is a purposeful effort. It requires the kind of work that a lot of people aren't willing to do because we've been made lazy. Yeah. We, we, we've been made to see anything that will challenge uh, European authority and power over us as a threat. And even those who say, oh, we're European, we're, we're the same. They know that Europeans will kill you for nothing. Yeah. They, they, they know to stay away from revolutionary because they don't want to be anywhere near the fallout because they know your rule is going to be after you. So if, if that wasn't the case, well, information is information. Knowledge is mm-hmm. knowledge. What different would, what does it make if you're reading Marimba Ani or John Henry Clark or whoever? I mean, if it's just information, it's information. But no, they know to read only what they are instructed to read or what they're guided to read by their enemies. And they feel safe in that space. Yeah. So that's, that's part of that um, independent educational process uh, where you, um, I talk about classics in Asafo, Mm -hmm. where the classics that they have, that Mm. they have us read, they teach you how to be European. They teach you how to think as a European, which they're supposed to. They're European classes. They're supposed to do that. But some of us will then say, okay, well, now they have the European classes. Let's, Let's take them. Okay, we have some African classes. Let's take them through the African classes. So they're going to be looking at the African classics through European eyes Mm -hmm. in this independent centered uh, homeschooling education setting. They get taught the African classics first so they can then look at the world through African eyes. Right. Right. And interpret it. So we're, we're, as you say, we're, we're doing this backward, very much backward. A lot of us who are, who are trying, who, who, you know, good intentions, Mm -hmm. but we're still doing it. Um, we're still doing it backward. Uh, we we need we need those who have the um, the courage, courage to do this because it requires 
I think more than courage. anything else, courage. Yes, to do that, that's it right there. And because, you know, I was I was just struggling because, you know, I'm in Mississippi mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there are a few black school districts. When I say mm -hmm. black, I mean administration is black, educators are black, mm -hmm. students are black, yet they're failing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's troubling to me because mm -hmm. although you may not control the curriculum, you still control the culture of mm -hmm. school. And these children should be in a inviting, loving, nurturing setting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it takes courage to do that. Yes. It takes courage to go into an institution that is maintained to do one thing and say, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to change it. We're going to do this different. We're mm -hmm. going to show our children positive Black imagery. We're going to come in here and be loving and nurturing to these mm -hmm. children. We're not going to call them animals. We're not mm -hmm. going to laugh at them. We're not going to put them on medication. We're going to create a loving environment. Um, but that that would take courage to do that. Mm -hmm. well, it would take courage to expect the best out of our children, nothing but black excellence. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes courage to, you know, to just go and be unapologetic. Absolutely. So, you know, Absolutely. that's the key word right there is courage. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times when I'm writing and I'm researching some of the ancestors, especially in Mississippi, mm -hmm. um, I find that our ancestors had so much courage, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and you know they in 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 the uh, Yoruba knew that they mm -hmm. had the courage. That's why they wanted to keep them ignorant, <laughs> because they know if they knew anything, that coupled mm -hmm. with the courage, mm -hmm. it was over with. Mm -hmm. So you know now we have a lot of knowledge, but we don't have that courage. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm glad you said that word, courage, because it, it definitely takes courage to do anything unapologetic. That's, I don't that's, care if you're on your own or if you're in somebody else's institution. That's 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 critical. Mm -hmm. And even though I know that there are many examples in the north, the, in the south, my family's from Dothan, Alabama. Mm. Both sides. So when when the, the the stories of people in the south who stood up when everybody else was scared to death to breathe. That's that's a that's a level of courage. You know, I wish I was just a little boy sitting up on a hill watching. Yeah. You know, that would tell me, oh, oh that's what a, that's how a man <laughs> acts. Oh, OK. Now mm -hmm. I get it. I'm clear now. OK, but we don't have many examples of courage. We have a lot of examples of mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't we don't have examples of people. Actually, we, we have some examples. Yes, we have some examples. I mean, we know mm -hmm. we have some examples. We don't have anywhere near enough examples because mm -hmm. when you when you have a, a imbalance in that where the greater number is among the compromised then and that that's the that's the side that are is rewarded and receives the resources and all the rest of that right. then the children and the capitalist materialistic system they're of course going to gravitate toward that exactly yeah you know that, yeah. that's only logical why, why would why would i want to possibly i remember um Going driving our daughter to school one day, and I think she was like the third, maybe the fourth grade. And um, we're having you know our, our little conversation, um, warrior stuff. And she said, I don't want to be a revolutionary. Mm. You, you can imagine the expression on my face. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't, I don't want to be a revolutionary. And so, I, you know, I said, well, Why not? She said, Because um, all of the revolutionaries who I admire were killed, mm -hmm. were murdered. I said, wow. I said, you know, I'm, I'm not even thinking, I, of course I know my daughter's brilliant, but I'm not even thinking in terms of the depth mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. Well, you, well, you sat down and you, 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 you looked at all these people and over time you've come to the conclusion, not that you think that they're wrong, not that you don't think that they're courageous, but you want to live. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see that they didn't. Um, it's like the children, they they see this and they they because they've been taught this materialistic thing, they don't understand the wealth of friends, the wealth of family, the wealth of community. They understand the wealth of cash. Right. You know, that's what they that's what they understand. That's what they brought. That's what they hear on the radio. That's that's all that they they know. So this doesn't make any sense to them. So many I've encountered. We've got you know the conversations. They they look at uh, African nationalists, warriors, conscious people as fools. Yep. 
you know, to be to be suckered. Not yes. and, and you know, said not just fools, but but people to be used to be to be you know dumped on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of this. So when we talk about this education process, which of course I always argue we start small, then. Mm -hmm. Land is ideal. Um, and the reason why I say it's ideal is because it allows us to isolate the children from the insanity. When, when, we, were in, when we were in grad school, um, we, we wanted um, to create an uh, independent school. And it was really NEI's baby because NEI came up in you know, Sharon, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to go to school and become um, an English teacher so she could start her own school to teach her nieces and nephews correctly mm -hmm. um and i was i of course was on board i mean i didn't really have a dream but i was on board and my idea was that we need a boarding school because i that, that fourth grade syndrome that um who's that out of chicago um black conspiracy destroy black boys jawanza kajufu jawanza kajufu taught that fourth grade syndrome and mm -hmm. i was a product of that because I dropped out in the seventh grade and it, you know, stuff just tumbled. But um, so my mind said, OK, there was a reason why you that happened to you is because you need to realize just how bad it was at that point in time so that you could start something to teach boys at that before that age. So they wouldn't get caught up in what you got caught up in. Mm -hmm. uh, so my whole idea was a boarding school. And of course, any she was like, oh, no, we can't do that because you're separating the boys from their family and mom and all the rest of this. And I'm like, well, mom, they come and visit on weeks. And no, you can't. You can't do that. She was adamant against that. Mm -hmm. uh, about a decade ago, she changed her mind. I didn't mm -hmm. say, you know, I didn't keep what she changed her because of the, the growth in the yes. level of insanity in their face. Yes. She <laughs> said, yes, we need boarding schools. Uh -huh. so, land is ideal. But if we can. Um, one one of my favorite uh, science fiction writers for us is Octavia Butler. Yes. In, in Parable of the Sower, which was required mm -hmm. reading in one of my courses at Morehouse. In Parable of the Sower, um, she talked about how these houses sort of formed a circle to to to, to protect themselves. And to me, that's the second ideal. Mm -hmm. where, because every time that they move us, regentrification or what have you, we scatter. And then we got to find yep. ourselves, find each other again. Yeah. If we can have those people in our community who are conscious identify a place, an area, a community where all of us need to move as we are uprooted and we form that there. That's to me the second idea, because then you have a community, mm -hmm. you know, where we have our children and we're teaching our children and doing everything amongst ourselves, like uh, the East organization in Chicago, other organizations that 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 created these communities. And, you know, these things dissolve, but they're, they're still beautiful models. Um, that, to me, is the second. The third ideal is, you know, you got two or three families with the same politics and one or two of those families go to work and they share their income along with the other stuff that, that they say with the, with the couple or the individual or individuals who are going to stay in the home with all the children and teach. OK, so, you know. That person's heart. You know that person's mind. You know that person will go and find answers if the children are asking questions and they don't know the answer to. You know that this person is 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 accountable to the children and to the community. But it's the, these to me are small things, but I don't think there's any other way because once they are aware of what you are trying to do, especially mm -hmm. if you are attached to them in any public way, then they're going to come in and destroy it. Okay. And um, most of the center scholars I know, and I completely and totally understand, and I agree. You talk about these charter schools; these charter schools are still their schools. Yeah, right. They're, they're still their school. It just it just looks prettier, I guess. Yeah, and 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 that's the frustration that that I have <laughs> is mm -hmm. uh you know any if I had a dollar for every time someone said grant, mm -hmm. I would probably be fully funded. And mm -hmm. I and I, we lose we don't fully understand that you know mm -hmm. if we accept any type of public funding that's a wrap mm -hmm. you know you have to allow they dictate what it is that you do mm -hmm. and so really being independent <coughs> we we have we have we can do it I see mm -hmm. us invest in other institutions 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the time. I work at one where we invest, black folks mm-hmm. invest in it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and then I get, you know, the emails from some of the institutions I attended. No, I'm not mm-hmm. sending you a dollar. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you know, we're still investing in these institutions and we don't mm-hmm. understand the importance of investing in ours and, and mm-hmm. really building and really being because I tell people all the time what we do in these uh African black centered institutions, we do more than teach the academics, we teach mm-hmm. life skills. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you interact with your brother and sister? Mm-hmm. How do you you know, are you respectful of your elders? Do you mm-hmm. listen to your elders? Yes. All these things that, you know, we're losing as we assimilate into mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. dominant society. And I think, you know, when we talk about when people say, you know, what's going on, we're going on mm-hmm. <laughs> by, by, by not being African and, and being so far removed from our uh, essence, mm-hmm. of the essence of who we are as Africans. And you, you said it, you, you said it, it's, it's, it allows us to be who we are, you know, and of course I do as well, mm-hmm. but I, I love to be in here listening to Enia in room when she's in class mm-hmm. because she's always talking to them as a mother, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, you know, you shouldn't, why would you do that? That's not African. You don't treat elders like that. You don't treat your siblings like that. You don't treat your brothers and she's explaining and she's right. using Proverbs, right. stuff that we can't do. Right. That's, that's one thing, and um, it, it doesn't pop in my mind very often. But I could been institute every penny that has kept us alive has been from the community. Yeah, you know, we, we we've never, like you said, we, we've never um, accepted a grant. You know, any kind of any kind of any kind of money, and you know, as you said, you know, we've been offered, you know, left and right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But we know. You know, and we, we look at we look at the community. You you know, you got strings, and of course, those to us are bad strings. We have good strings. The community is good strings because if you're taking money from the community to do what you do, if you're taking money from people who uh, honor and believe what you're doing because of what you do, if you stop doing that, you 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 turn into some you know compromised person. Then those strings are going to disappear as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> as they should. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's nothing whatsoever. You said the heart of if 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 there, the resources are there, okay. If you you have a, a a family who decides, okay, we want to take our home and turn it into a school, and the community pays the mortgage for that that house, or pays the gas light, whatever for the house uh, collectively, all your children to get educated exactly the way they need with all the love that they need with the best resources at your disposal. You know, all the paper, all the pens, all the everything that folks need. And you have all these folks in the community. They say, the community can run it. You got community expert, computer experts in the community. Yes. You got transportation in the community. You got people who, you know, pass on their skills in the community. You know, we, we put out a call, um, I guess it was about maybe four years ago, because we had dictionaries. We had Webster's Collegiate, but they were getting kind of ragged. Mm-hmm. Uh, next thing we know, what six, six brand new Webster's Collegiate show up at the door. From a yeah. brother who didn't want, you know, his name known because of where he was working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this, it's like when you're doing what needs to be done, then people will who support and love what we're doing, or you, you know, what you're doing, they're gonna find a way. Yeah, they're gonna find a way to make sure to happen. They're gonna you, you're gonna open up your door and there's a box of books sitting out there. Right, right. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we we have a, a neighbor as an example who is probably so far away from our politics in terms of sovereignty and nation as possible, but we have received so many a set of black encyclopedias, uh, Richard Wright Native Boy hardback first edition signed, you know that she they use for their children, uh-huh. and they they because they they understand they don't understand the politics but they understand that we're trying to do something for the children, right. Right, you know, right, and people mm-hmm. see that, and they know they know your heart. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. they see what you're doing, so you can't be. I mean, there's there's probably not going to be a break between what you're doing outside and and, and how you're dealing with the children inside. And these children, right. they they know they know love. Mm-hmm. They can feel love, and they the fakeness of it. They can feel fake love too. Yeah, and they know in these spaces, even though there's greater discipline. I'm not talking about a belt or switch. There's greater discipline. There's greater order. There's greater, greater being African. Uh, there's greater uh, dialogue. 
you know, that's what that's really one of the things that got me um, in trouble at Morehouse. Mm -hmm. I, I put a quarter proverb on the board and we might spend the rest of the day talking about yeah. that quarter mm -hmm. proverb. Right. You know, and of course, you got little spies in the room. They go and run and tell whoever. But still, you know, you 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 do like you said, you do what you need to do from the heart without compromise. Okay, And you let the chips fall where they may. Right. I I have come to the to the belief that um that the ancestors guide mm -hmm. and that they will um uh, make a way if you don't even if you don't know they're gonna make a way for you to do what you need to do for us if you just just allow it. Mm -hmm. So when um I said you know, when we when we left Morehouse, we had nothing. Our our income had dropped to one half of one person's. And folks need to remember um, college faculty aren't paid. In fact, the faculty, when we were there at Morehouse, they get paid, got paid less on average than the Atlanta public school system teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we left, we had like one half of one person's salary. But because we said this is going to happen, it was, there was no ifs, there was no buts. You, you know, this is going to happen because we have to do this. Then the things that you need will find their way to you. Just like with anything else. Any, any, it's, it's like we can use that application when it comes to anything. Well, I'm, I'm going to become, you know, a super rock star, and no matter what happens, you know, you still pursue that. So, and you become this super rock star. How, what, why, why do we believe that when it comes to assisting African people, when it, when it comes to dealing with what we need to do in our community, when it comes to taking what we know or what we've learned and applying it where African people need it, somehow we can't become successful there we can't we can't do what needs to be uh done there you know and then when we realize sadly when when many of us realize the mistakes that we've made by sending our children to negroes lost souls and euros to educate them and we realize this in the sixth or seventh or eighth or ninth or tenth grade and we bring them to these independent schools expecting them to save these children the damage that has been done They've been socialized, so they can't help but see us through European eyes. Mm -hmm. They can't help but see us through the eyes, you know, of exploiters. They can't help that. So we're talking about independent education. Then we're not just talking about some um, Band-Aid thing. I, I remember one um, t teacher was an educator um, who... Uh, made the point and she was responsible for a school that took the children all the way through high school and they had to close their high school. He said, because the people aren't bringing their children to us so they can be trained to be learn to be African. They're bringing their children to us so that they can be protected from the racism of society until they're old enough to go into the real world, to the real schools. You know, that mentality among so many of the parents who bring mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. children you know, to these institutions is is um, horrible. So we need to be, we have become very selective there. Yeah. You know, you know sometimes we can't, well, before we couldn't be a selective, but we become more and more selective there because, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't make sense for you to sit and you, you explain to the child the truth and they go home and everybody tells them the exact opposite. Yeah, right. You know. Um, right. But without We're learning that we need to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From from what they say from the, from the womb to the tomb. Mm -hmm. Period. So they they need to. And what what happened with most institutions is that they might have started with, you know, two or three families, little ones in kindergarten or first grade or pre K, and as they went up in age, then that institution extended into that next grade and then next grade and next grade until they made it through high school. Mm -hmm. Some even, you know, college, depending upon what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest someone trying to start because I'm, I'm a big person on small. It's trying to start a school that goes from pre-K through through college. Right. It's, it's, you know, you need to develop. You need to, to, to yeah. grow. You need to live with it and see, yeah. see what it feels like. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, <laughs> I was thinking it doesn't. I, I keep wanting to say, and I, I'm not too sure if people really understand their power when you need to say, and, and we do need to say, because we've been beat up badly. You do need to say, you don't need these credentials to do this work. 
Right. Okay. Uh, they were of, established to keep us from doing the work, especially yes. after uh, integration assimilation. <laughs> That's yeah. when most of it was established because when, mm -hmm. when we were teaching ourselves, it wasn't a requirement. Wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. And we were learning. Right. And the children wanted to learn and they knew that we loved them. Yep. And they didn't have the equipment. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like there's a correlation between uh, a dislike for learning or refuse to learn and um, greater materialism. Mm -hmm. the more things I have, the less I want to 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 learn. Yeah. And not only to learn, to think. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a progress in that now. Mm -hmm. Carter G. Woodson talked about miseducation. I, I like to say diseducation in addition to miseducation because mm -hmm. we have... Um, you know, miseducation, you, you're just learning the wrong things. Right. Miseducation, you're, you're learning how to hate to think. All you want to do is memorize. The smartest person mm -hmm. in, the, in the classroom is the one who has the best memory, not the one who can think the best. Right. The one who can think the best is in trouble. Yep. And that's what we need to, you can't, how are you going to create a nation where you can't think independently? <laughs> exactly. You, know, exactly. You, you can't create anything. All you can do is imitate. Right. And and that's a struggle too because when we when I speak on building our own institutions, I'm like just just don't even think about what we're used to. Don't even think about this system, educational mm -hmm. system right now. Think about what it would take for us to do this. We don't have to have a eight to three a uh, day. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do a Monday through Friday. We can do Saturday school. We mm -hmm. can do afternoon. You know, mm -hmm. we have to think about our experience. In our circumstances, and stop letting them be the standard. Right. Um, you know, I I say I'll use them as an example, but not the standard. Mm -hmm. right. And so I think that's what we struggle with too when we mm -hmm. talk about creating our own institutions. Is that we always look to someone else for the standard instead of mm -hmm. having to sit down and saying, okay, what is it that we need? Mm -hmm. Nation build. Do we really need to do this, mm -hmm. or can we do that? Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it, it's uh, <laughs> it's a yeah. lot that you know we need to just really think about and look at well not mm -hmm. a lot but some unique things yeah. over time I, I believe it was in this it was in the 70s a book came out called fear of flying and this was about some white woman writing to other white women about you know being coming independent business people mm -hmm. but a lot of us had that fear of flying mm -hmm. and you have to um you have to be willing to take that that Risk. We talk about it all the time in terms of businesses, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't talk about that in terms of our most precious resource, according to Francis right. Wilson. You know, that's that's our most precious resource, exactly. our children. Exactly. And we should be able to give. I mean, it's like how how to I like to look at this this life as a test where when it's all over, I'm going to be questioned. Mm hmm about mm -hmm. what it was. And of course, I know my and the feather. But to, and to me, it's the same thing. It's like, okay, well, you knew what needed to be done, but you weren't courageous enough right. to do what needed to be done. I don't, I don't, I don't want to come up with the short at the short end of the stick with that. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and I'm not operating out of fear, but I'm operating on the principle in terms of, you know, well, you you test yourself, but still the 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 idea that this can't be done to me is extremely problematic. That we can't create our own curriculum, and we have curriculums out there. Yeah, our curriculum out there. We have the we have that out there. Um, we, we have models of whatever it needs to be out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm I'm like, you know, so, sometimes you you. When I when I turned when I became a teenager, I got so sick and tired of of black people saying we're our worst, own worst enemy. I heard that a lot coming up, and I got so sick and tired of that. But sometimes I look around now, and I'm not going to say that, right? But I'm going to say our our um, inability to rise had a lot to do with um, us putting a, a double standard on our ability and not prioritizing our children, not prioritizing our future, not pro prioritizing our strength. Yeah. <laughs> and if we don't take the time to do that, if the younger folks don't take the time to do that, if they can't step out, um, encourage and create the institutions that we need, 
uh, then we're we're in a lot more trouble than I think we are. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm assuming that we have a lot of wisdom among young folk, and I'm assuming that a lot of them are doing this and they're doing it under the radar. Mm -hmm. And if they are, then I'm, you know, applauding that to no end. Um, and I operate upon that assumption because it's not good to be doing something that you know your people need and to look around and see no one coming behind you doing, you know, it better than you. So I'm operating on, or so we're operating on the assumption that that is going on, mm -hmm. that they do see the need for that, that they are developing the kind of complementary relationships that we need, that they are applying or, or, or gaining the skills to be able to do the land. I mean, to me, an education is, is how to farm. Yeah. You yeah. Know, if, yeah. if I had to, I tell folks all the time, because I'm re rebuilding this house. I said, if I had to do this over again with what I know now, I'd be a carpenter who liked to read. Mm. You know, that, that would be you, you would probably never see have seen me in a classroom. I probably would have never gone to college, never gone to grad school, never taught college. I would have been a carpenter who loved to read or a carpenter who loved to read and write, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, because those are those are skills, um, nation building skills. Those are yep. survivable skills. Yep. Those are, those are those are skills where it's you and you're not dumb enough to fire yourself. Right. So you don't have to worry about being fired or worry about this job or what have you. Um, you don't have to worry about this business. You don't have to worry about providing, you know, giving that man, sending that man's children to, to college. You know, mm -hmm. I, I see no reason why we can't provide for ourselves everything that we need. We don't, we don't have the right uh, mentality. Right. Most of us. Right. It, it reminds me of that book um, I read, Brainwashed by Tom Burrell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he speaks about, you know, how media has played so much into mm -hmm. our perception of who we are. And one of the worst things, you know, it's bad enough when other people think this about you. But when you begin mm -hmm. to internalize it, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's when the real problem um, begins. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell mm -hmm. people all the time I work and I see, you know, our children. A lot of them come in on the academic side and struggle. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I see the other children over there on the vocational side, <laughs> okay. learning how to be the employers and our mm -hmm. children are struggling to learn how to be employees. Mm -hmm. And so we need to start, you know, flipping mm -hmm. that and say, mm -hmm. okay, this is a skill set that is needed. We need farmers. We need carpenters. We need plumbers. Yes. We need, um, skill sets that are going to maintain our life. Mm -hmm. right. you know? and and we, it, it, even if we're working for somebody, look at mm -hmm. look at the, the income, hourly wages of a carpenter or a plumber, electrician, a farmer, yes. compared to these folks walking around with shirts and ties on. Yes. The, 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 I, 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 whenever there's an example, I'll take the students out because when they were physically here, uh, in this neighborhood, they have these wrought iron fences in between bricks. And I know uh, one of the brothers who does that. He's And his son works with him. His son is, is an adult. And he's, you know, they have this business together now. Mm -hmm. And he was working on the sister across the street's fence. And I took the children out and said, you know, we're, we're going to sit and watch this guy do some work for a while. So we're sitting on the porch and talking and what he's doing and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, would you, you know, would you guys like to do something like that? And most of them, Mm -mm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to do that. I said, do you know that all he did was put up, he put up, I believe it was six fence sections into brick, which required simply bolts, and painted them one at a time, slowly but surely. It took him, uh, I would say, a good six hours, he and his son. And I said, they just made $4,000. And we went into class and we calculated how much money that was per hour mm -hmm. for each of, for both of them, to, you know, individually together. You know, and that they, but they, it still didn't be right. didn't register because, oh, they're doing that kind of work. You know, they're, they're doing the, the, the meaning or what have you. It, se it seemed to me like we had stronger complementary relationships. We had better mm -hmm. community when we were doing that kind of work. Yes. You know, taking Working care of our hands. It was, it's, it's, it's rewarding. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people all the time when my dad transitioned, it was devastating. My dad was, he could build a house from the ground up. And he made a great living because he did everything. He could do the electrical work. He could do the plumbing. He could do it all. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, now there's no one there in town that can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, everyone is like, you know, we sure miss your father. Yeah, I, I know. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know and, and it's it's not admirable. I'm like, that's one of the most, he made a great living right. and, and left a legacy mm-hmm. for me and my sister uh, mm-hmm. working with his hands. Mm-hmm. And, and we, we really need to understand that the, there's value in that. Mm-hmm. But um we've been talking for a while but, uh you know it, it's been great and we've gotten a lot of comments i do want to recognize some people we have uh baba omar on curtis mind where there's boba omar out there in louisiana um brother mitch is uh, brother carl tone and i think brother uh, sister brenda is still on out there in harlem mm-hmm. and uh my sister is on yes yeah, sister carol and Sister Angela, Sister T, my cousin, um, Sister Mila, and let me see, and, and Brother Jahi is on as well. And I thank you all for chiming in. Um, I think the conversation was very rich and very powerful and make us think about some things because one of the things that I'm trying to do, Bob, is study mm-hmm. the ancestors and, and talk with elders who are mm-hmm. educated because mm-hmm. we want to be as effective as we can be here at Ashe. Um, you know, I, I was studying uh, Mama Fanny Jackson Coppin and Marva mm-hmm. Collins. And next month, I'm going to be talking about uh, Mama uh, Anna Julia Cooper. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, these newfound people. I know you share a lot of quotes mm-hmm. uh, from her. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to study her so that I can uh, learn how they were instructors in their methods. Because mm-hmm. they were very effective in their teaching, mm-hmm. and they understood oh. that our children have a capability to learn mm-hmm. at a higher rate. I, I, when I was reading uh, Mama Fanny and Mama Marva, I, I feel like the system is dumbing down mm-hmm. it is. our children, mm-hmm. and uh, they can they can actually work at a higher level. Mm-hmm. And I think that maybe it's probably a lot of the problems with our children in the school system now where they're yes. diagnosing them with ADHD and, mm-hmm. and saying that they're having all these behavior problems. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I appreciate you for coming on and, and encouraging me and inspiring me because every time I talk to you and, and Mama Yah, uh, and Yah, I uh, always leave refreshed and rejuvenated to uh, carry on and, and really uh, do the, as much as I can as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, that says... You know, there's a reason why we, we call your name. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you are you are inspiration for us. You know, along with the rest of the crew, there. Mm-hmm. You you know you you're you're an inspiration for us. And anyone doing this work to this degree is because you had choices, and your choices yeah. did not did, did not require <laughs> this. It didn't require right. this. You know, um, right. Ninety nine percent of the people who we admire, their choices did not require this. They made it. They made a choice, and they went ahead with that choice. So, you know, we 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 admire. It, it helps us when we have other people, yeah, who 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 are doing this work. So, yes. you know, it's, it's always an honor to be on. Our, we always love. I enjoy. I know she enjoys also. You know, speaking with you, we enjoyed ourselves and we came, and and enjoyed the family there, the community yeah. there. It, it, sh- it should have been longer. We should have arrived earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but we already tried to put together because we just had the summit last weekend. And oh, so yes. we tried, we, we was like, we got to start now and we want to bring you and uh, Mama Yah back and we want to bring Press Small. We want to bring all oh, the people that we've had here oh, wow. back uh, next year. That um, nice. you know, we, we really had a good time. There's a young couple that opened a coffee shop Yes, yes, yes. And they allowed us to use their space uh, because that's what they're there for. Um, mm-hmm. And so we're going to be doing some tutoring with them as well. So we we're just excited to be in their space. Uh, yeah. And I know you all will enjoy it and love it as oh, well. Yeah. It's, it's a really inviting, Absolutely. nurturing, space, safe space for us. Um, but I do want you to let everyone know how they can order your books, your information, and next month is your upcoming, you're having the giving month, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's, October is our fundraising month. Um, mm-hmm. And we have, there are I say a number of events coming up as well. I have a, on this coming Saturday, 
I believe it. Yes, this is coming Saturday. We I'm going to be doing a um, men's annual quarterly. I mean, annual men's quarterly um, lecture event, and mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about warrior words. But of course, I'm going to post it on my page, and we have a course coming up uh, dealing with the wisdom of four scholars. Um, remember, I need Amos Wilson, Francis Chris Wilson, I believe, and um, any eyes looking at me like I said something wrong. <laughs> Is that the Wednesday course? Yes, that's coming. That's uh -huh. like, yeah, that's that's like this Saturday. This, this, this Saturday is the men's quarterly. Men's quarterly, the first Saturday in November. Oh, well, I'm in the long run. I sure am. It's all right. It's, it's 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 coming. These things these things are coming, and I'm doing a course. And I was so pleased. Um, I did a lecture at a place here called the Black Dot, and mm -hmm. Mama Rumble was sitting up on the, the the front row, and that's that's always unnerving to me because oh. I'm like, okay, how am I going to you know teach anything here? She needs to come up here and talk, or let me sit down. <laughs> but she was she was there because she was excited about. Um, having uh, a class with with um, her words being explained from my perspective in it. And I was really, really, really pleased about that. So I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to this course. And of course, I'm going to remind everybody the K-Buka uh, event, yeah. which is my favorite. That's November the 19th, and it's going to be live and um, virtual. So, so I'm trying to gather the warriors and make a trip to Atlanta. Oh, that would be yeah. beautiful. I'm <laughs> I'm really trying to to get it together so we can come mm -hmm. and be okay. in person for that. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be very uh, rewarding for all of us to come down. That would that would that would be, of course, you know, I'd, I'd be floored. I, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't be able to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That absolutely mm -hmm. would be great if it's possible. That would be great. Yes, I'm, um, I'm trying to get it together. Mm -hmm. And all of all of um, my books and DVDs, I should say our DVDs, because <clears throat> any I had some DVDs also included in there, Womanhood okay. and uh, Motherhood. Um, they're available on our site, which is www.akobenhouse, A-K-O-B-E-N-H-O-U-S-E.com. Um, all of all 28 of my books and the three work four workbooks um, are available there. Um, and of course you can reach out to me on, on Facebook or email me and while I'm a brood at yahoo.com. Um, I guess, I guess that's about it. We, you know, we, we need the support of the community to do this work. Absolutely. We need, to, and I appreciate the exposure, you know, is being given to us here as mm -hmm. well as, you know, online. Uh, and it, it, it is a level of appreciation because, it's not something that that um, we ask. Um, people come to us. Mama Crystal said, "You know, you want to be on." Sure, absolutely, and that allows us to be be seen and heard and understand. You know, we're we're of the same mind. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to do what needs to be done for our people. And every I've posted many times. Warriors don't understand. A lot of times, warriors don't understand that every purchase is made at Akaben House allows Akaben Institute to stand because that's our outlet that is that's our where the money comes in to assist us in doing this work that goes beyond the the tuition uh, and i also ask that uh folks support mama crystal and what she's uh i'm not trying what she's doing there um the community needs to support this and the more support you know that comes then the easier the work and the more expansive the work can become in this nation building process well, I will say this before we close. You you have inspired me to get my writing done um, because I have like three projects going on. And okay. like you said, you know, the most important will rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, you know, because it is a way to fund the work yes. um, that we do. And, and and we need that. We need to fund it. So I'll, I'll be working on some things. Um, you know, I, I was telling you about the one that I wanted to do. You know, if they teach this, then we should be knowing this, you know, mm -hmm. like parallels of the people and events um, in this country. Mm -hmm. And then I, I had this really uh, awakening experience about Mississippi. 
Okay. Uh, I know you all are familiar with uh, Baba Akinyele Emoja's work. Mm -hmm. that you back, but yeah. then I was like sifting, and I'm always finding a, a Mississippi legend. I'll say. Mm -hmm. uh, like an EJ Stringer, who actually was the person who pulled Mega Evers into the movement. Okay. Like uh, mm -hmm. Vera Mae Piggy, that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. So I want to uh, write something about these unknown soldiers, warriors, mm -hmm. and uh, something like Mississippi Goddamn, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, in a mm -hmm. positive way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and work on that. So I had talked with Baba uh, Akinyele, and we're going to mm -hmm. be working on something in that regard. So you Good. inspire me and encourage me to get moving. Yeah. Get, get it done. Get it done. We need that we need that information. And you know, Ashe can of course always use the finances, but we mm -hmm. need that inspiration. We need that knowledge. We need that 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 wisdom. So no one can say, oh I didn't know anybody. You know, there's, there's, yeah. there's nobody or, or only I only know these names. No, there are names behind those names and beside those names. We need to have everything there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, we if we have, have to learn about Ulysses S. Grant, we need to know who Martin Delaney is. Absolutely. Well. Absolutely. So, you know, um, that that's what that's what it is. So I'm not going to uh, keep you all any uh, longer. I'm going to head on my my little granddaughter. Uh, she's called me a couple of times. So that means Gigi that get back okay. to the house. <laughs> we need time to get to the real work. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So y'all have a good evening and we'll be talking soon and, and, and we'll be tuning in. I see uh brother Jai, he said uh we'll be there at the yeah, so yeah, so he's he's my he's our warrior and we're gonna make that trip. I will be looking forward to it. Yes, Absolutely. yes, all right. Well, until next time, a BB Huff ODA. A BB for ODA. And um, thank you all, Sante Sana, and uh y'all have a great evening. <laughs>